this uh, carburetor kit in. This is the old one. This is the new one. Everything pretty much looks like an exact match. I mean, it's made in China. Well, so was the original. <laughs> so what really is the difference, I guess? Alright, so we're going to put the old one aside. Uh, this kit was like 12 bucks. A couple gaskets. We got uh, a couple extra primer bulbs, air filter, spark plug, grommet. That grommet, pretty much good for nothing. This is a grommet that would normally go in it. You already seen where I replaced it. New fuel lines. Um, I had a vent left over from one of my other carb kits, so I've already replaced the vent, the tank vent, uh, extra fuel filter. So this vent. And fuel filler. So I got I got three extra fuel filters just with this kit. So twelve bucks, whatever. Can't beat it. All right. So let's get on with the carburetor install. If you've seen in the, in the first part here, our throttle thing fell out. So to get that back in there, I've already did it once earlier, just to see if I could do it. By removing the two screws in the handle right here, I was able to pry it open. Just take a screwdriver and I worked it right in there. Was able to catch the back end. It's just a black on your trigger. It goes back into here. It's got a hole in it. You just got to fish this in there. So I'll get that done. So by propping it open like that with a flathead screwdriver, I can see see the little lever in there that's moving up and down. You just got to work it from under here like this and slip it in a hole on the end. All right, so we got it up in there. You can see the trigger moving. Now you just got to get the carb on without knocking that back off. I'm not going to put the screws in because... If I put, if I knock it off, I got to take them right back out. So now we want to get the carburetor on. It came with gaskets. I'm assuming this one, since it's the only one with the holes that line up. It has a hole here for air fuel flow. Carburetor goes on like that. The uh, throttle pushes on this side. And this gasket here is the one that lines up with that hole. But the original gasket is actually in really good shape still. So I'm just going to go ahead and use what was on it. I will be using the other one on the back side. It didn't originally have one. The kit comes with one, but I am going to put that one on. But as far as the uh, original gasket, it's in good shape. So I am going to reuse it. And this is the side that lines up with the carb, like so. Hole lines up. So we're going to turn that. We're going to take our other gasket, it lines up with that hole, 
then we need to take our air filter plate insert our two carburetor bolts and uh, this goes on like that where your choke is facing outward just like so so everything lines up alright now we're going to push this stuff out of the way we need to get our throttle hooked up through our throttle hole right there and hopefully not lose it out of the uh, trigger again and it fell out of the trigger so I'm gonna have to fix that again I'm probably just gonna go ahead and put it in the carburetor like so and uh, put the carburetor on and see if I can do it that way so we don't lose it again. Okay, so we just line that up. Then get our cordless. And snug that up. Now what I'm gonna try to do once again is just pry this part and see if I can fish this up in here without losing uh, once you get it hooked to the carburetor it shouldn't wiggle anymore so what I'm going to attempt to do is do that I'm going to do it off camera because if it takes 10 minutes I don't want to film the whole thing so I've got my there it is fuel rod or the throttle rod up in there pried open with a screwdriver and I just got to attach it into the back side of the trigger you can see it moving in there. Let's see if I can get you a better shot to explain what I'm doing. That black piece right there that's moving down. There's a hole right here in the bottom of it, and you just have to get that rod inserted in it. All right, so you can see I just took a couple of different screwdrivers, and I had to pry the black thing over gently this way, and I got the rod in there. Now you can see it moving and see it get focused here and you can see it turning the uh, throttle like so. So it's just a little tricky but it's not too difficult. Okay so now that we got that throttle hooked up, I'm just going to replace my screws before it comes loose again and that should hold it all together with the carburetor being on and the handle being tight it shouldn't have enough play to move now all right so our throttle is working that's a good sign now before we put this on I just want to snug these up Now we're going to attach our fuel lines. We already got our vent. It's up in here. And we're going to take, this is the fuel draw and the uh, primer bulb return. We're just going to attach those underneath. These are long, so what we're going to have to do is kind of get a measurement here and cut them off. And I'll see if I can zoom in here and show you here in just a second. So what we're going to do now is cut the fuel lines and get them hooked up. Just got to try to figure out how long you need them. You don't want to cut them too short or you got to redo the whole thing. All 
Alright. Should do it. So now it's just a matter of getting your fuel lines hooked back up onto your carb. We're basically just sliding them onto those right there. Right underneath your air cleaner. There we go. Got them on there. Got to get them tightened up a little more. Slid up a little more. Those little yellow ones are a little bit smaller diameter than the black ones, so they're a little tougher to get on. Okay, I need to get that under just a little more. Alright, so we got our fuel lines hooked up. Carburetor's tight. Just need to get our air filter in. Like so. Put our cover back on. Yep, there goes the air filter. And the heavier part, thicker part, goes toward the bottom. Tighten that up. Throttle linkage is still working. Everything's good. All right. Got our plug wire. Snap it back on. Now I'm going to go through this real quick. I'm having some issues with the... Uh, the guy on eBay I bought this fan from, uh, mine's broke. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, just to show you what I, you know, the process. Basically, what happened was I offered him 950. It was 11 1150. I offered him 950. He accepted, it. and then he tried to jack up the shipping to make up for the two bucks he lost, and that's kind of dirty pool. So, been trying to get him to lower the shipping the last couple days. He hasn't responded. So, I'm gonna buy from somebody else. So in the meantime, I want to get this using. I got stuff out in the yard that needs cleaned up. So we're going to go ahead and put this in and until I get another one bought from a different seller. I'm going to show you how to put it in here. Remove all these housing bolts. One more that I got to reach in here with. All right, so this cover will pop off. fan it's it's just really simple guys fan goes on like so got a steel washer that goes on your cutter plate and a bolt really simple I just went ahead and went through it so I wanted to show you since I said I would in the other first part of the video so basically all I got to do is tighten that down and you're ready to go. I'm gonna get the wrench, get that tightened down, and uh, show you here in a sec. All right, so I got that tightened up. It's just a reverse process. Slap this back on, tighten up your bolts. We're gonna go ahead and do that off camera to save a few seconds, and uh, we're gonna get some fuel in it, see if we can get it primed and fired up. All righty, so I got the bolts tightened up. There's uh, this safety switch right here. This particular blower will not work if this, uh, shroud's not on to activate that switch and when you put the vacuum 
pipe on it also forces that switch in it will not operate unless that safety switch is in because I mean pretty obvious reasons you don't want your hand in there when it's spinning it I don't know a couple thousand rpms a second it'll chop your fingers off so we're gonna get this tightened up and we're gonna get some fuel give me fuel and give me fire and give me that which I desire Ooh. then we're gonna see if we can uh, fire this sucker up so the kit uh, has worked for the last three things I put it on or uh, yeah there's the other three old carburetors Zamas and Walbros I'm gonna clean them up again save them for parts I've got another one coming for an earthquake tiller that will be my next uh, repair video so I'm gonna get some fuel in this guys and uh, hopefully be back in action all right got some funnel here got our fuel once again, I'll reiterate that I uh, do not buy this high dollar pre-mixed stuff. Got these from work out of the dumpster from the concrete guys. I mix my own gas. I just thought these would be handy. So what I do is I just mix up my gallon of gas with my uh, two-stroke. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up because I'm going to be using it tomorrow, I believe. Hopefully. I just buy a gallon of gas and a gallon can, mix it up, and I pour it in these little quart containers for convenience. They're very convenient. That's why they're all dusty. Because <laughs> I'm not going to pay the extra $4 for that. That stuff probably costs double what you can mix your own for. But anyway... I digress. Alright, let's prime this thing. See if we get some fuel flow going. And the primer bulb is filling up. So that's a good sign, folks. We got fuel flow. Alright. Well, Guys, I'm going to throw it on cold start, turn it on, and we'll see if we can get it to fire. Hey, hey that sounded good. Let's uh, lower it down to about half choke. That's category three hurricane, people. I got stuff blowing everywhere. Look at that. Oh, my God. So that's a success. I'm going to have to uh, obviously adjust it just a little bit. Blowing my door open. All right, guys. So uh, did a little adjustment on the high and low right here and got that going. Um, I'll tell you again, for the fuel lines, you want the... Uh, the return line, you can see it right there. It's the yellow line. You want it on the, let me show you with this. You want the return line to the curved portion of the carburetor and the one with the fuel filter that goes in your tank to the straight one is your proper flow. All right, guys, so I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of this thing before I go. This is your blower tube. Goes right there, like so. That's your blower. On that side, when you undo that, the shredding back, the big tube, attaches onto there. There's a hose clamp. This goes in there, the hose clamp goes over top and locks into those little tabs and you tighten it up. And that's your shredder. Your suction tube. And this tube, when you put on your your big suction tube, this tube goes on like so, and uh, that collects. It'll either blow them out into your yard into shavings, or you can put a bag on there and it'll bag them up. So, guys, once again, long video, but 
if you're trying to put a carb kit on one of these you're having trouble i hope it helped you hope it uh, explained it good enough for you to get yours fixed got mine fixed appreciate you watching click that like subscribe hey i do all kinds of stuff you never know what i'll be doing next i will see y'all later catfish redneck is signing out